President Dr. Mulato Shoma opens the fifth National Cooperatives Exhibition and Bazaar. Ethiopia has attracted 2.3 billion US dollars in just half fiscal year. And Tunisia is a favorite destination for Chinese tourists every year. Hello, welcome to EBC News with the news. I'm Shmuel Islam. President Dr. Mulatu Tashoma calls for domestic working unions and cooperatives to join the industrial parks being constructed in various locations in the country. The president officially opened the fifth edition of the National Cooperatives Exhibition and Bazaar on Friday. Dr. Mulatu on the occasion highlighted the need for creating better market chain on both urban and rural areas. He also urged the cooperatives to consider participating in and investing within industrial parks being constructed in different areas in the country. To further productivity of farmers and pastoralists, cooperative agencies should strengthen their efforts. The agencies do have a potential to produce ample consumable products and create varied job opportunities. In this process, I urge you to manufacture items which could generate foreign currency with quality and quantity. You should also be intent to replace commonly imported items through producing them locally. Investment Commission says Ethiopia has attracted 2.3 billion US dollars foreign direct investment in just half fiscal year. The commission indicated 98 investment projects went operational over the last six months. Jerusalem Bazaha has more. Ethiopia has been striving to accelerate its industrialization by attracting FDI on its growth. That's why the Ethiopian Investment Commission has issued investment licenses for 162 foreign companies and of which close to 98 projects went operational over the state's time. According to the Commission, Ethiopia is working to achieve its plan to secure 4.2 billion USD this fiscal year. Now it has attracted 2.3 billion USD foreign direct investment in just half a year. There are different reasons to Ethiopia's good performance in attracting foreign direct investment. Ethiopia has been creating an enabling environment to attract FDI. It has been highly engaging in fulfilling infrastructural facilities and expanding market opportunities, including AGOA and using other mechanisms. This six months' performance is a good indication to achieve over the goal. The commissioner has called for the need to avoid instability and work for higher performance on the area. In the past times, instability has happened in different parts of Ethiopia. Therefore, it has an impact on decreasing flows of investment in the country. However, with the people and the government commitment, most foreign companies put trust to invest in Ethiopia. Others are also continuing their investment here. Therefore, we need to keep our peace and instability for mutual benefit. Industry parks have also created jobs to 30,405 citizens and 76% of them are women. The first well-equipped African leather and leather products technology laboratory in Ethiopia is training experts from the continent. The laboratory is testing products from South Africa, Sudan, Rwanda and Botswana. In an exclusive interview with ENA, Leather Industry Development Institute Communication Director Brahanu Serjabo said, experts for, from the four countries have been receiving training. Sadat Mohamed Sani has more. In an exclusive interview with Ethiopia News Agency, Leather Industry Development Institute Communication Director Brahanu Sajebo said experts from the four countries have been receiving training. He added African countries are coming here to benefit from the institute through various ways like sending their experts for training and getting tested their products. The establishment of this institution has brought a change in the sector. Later alone leading the sector in the country, but in the continent Africa also. 
African countries are coming here to benefit from the institution through various ways like sending their experts for training testing products in our laboratories. The director stated that the institute had three well-equipped internationally recognized laboratories, physical, chemical and instrumental. The physical lab has two units that test leather and leather products separately. Physical, chemical and instrumental laboratories. We have four well-equipped physical, chemical, instrumental, internationally recognized laboratories, which makes it the first in Africa with well-equipped labs at one place. A laser sample that used to be sent to England to be tested for 500 to 1,000 USD per price is now tested in our laboratories, Brahanu said. According to him, the institute has money to introduce the locally discarded sheep skin, Wanke, to the export market. Similarly, the institute is working on camel skin that will also be introduced to export market, it was learned. <laughs> The institution is also working to introduce new leather products for export. Among this is making use of sheep skin, locally known as wanki, is the first to be used as laser. And camel skin is also to be used as laser, after we found out that it is possible to use it. The director pointed out that the institute is also working with the renowned international institutions in areas related to quality of skin. Laser Industry Development Institute was awarded ISO 9001-2008 Quality Management Systems Certification from the International Organization for Standardization in February 2016 after successfully passing an audit by the certifying body. In connection to the 6th Defense Force Day, members of the Ethiopian Army embarked on a cleaning campaign in Addis Ababa city. Sadat Mohamed Sani has more on that. High-ranking military personnel and employees of Ministry of Defense have organized a cleanup campaign amid the celebration of the 6th Defense Force Day. The cleaning campaign was stayed at different parts of the city, including the D2 Hospital. This is one of the assortments we have planned to conduct before marking the 6th Defense Force Day. The National Defense Force always belongs to the people, and this campaign is to discharge our social responsibility beyond protecting the country. Health is one of the crucial factors for our social development, and that's why we chose to clean up this hospital. Plus, such activities are means to enhance our bond with the society. Our pledge of alliance always goes to the public, so we are always ready to engage in activities that would benefit the people. The cleaning campaign is also well supported by administration of Zoditu Hospital. The National Defense Force is working in various developmental assignments beyond protecting the country. Now they are discharging their social responsibility, which is very good and should be sustainable. Meanwhile, members of the National Defense Force reaffirmed their commitment to discharge their constitutional responsibility and safeguard the interest of Ethiopian people. The National Defense Force is like Little Ethiopia. We came from different parts of the country with different culture and background. Within this diversity, we work for one goal smoothly. We are here for one reason, that is to safeguard our country and the constitution. Our diversity in here is a beauty that holds us together. Ethiopia has been losing over 840 million US dollars each main harvest season from post-harvest loss of four crops, a study revealed. The study covered 14 districts of Tigray, Amhara, Oromia and Southern Nations, Nationalities and Peoples Regional States. The country has accordingly launched a post-harvest strategy at reducing the level of post-harvest loss to 5% by 2020. According to the team leader, the study focused on reasons of post-harvest loss and solutions conducted on wheat, maize, sorghum and haricot beans. The impact of this loss is not only economical, but also of health caused by low quality of food crops that are not properly managed. The study showed that sorghum had the highest post-harvest loss, which is about 30%, and the average of the four crops is 25%. Lack of awareness, shortage of trained manpower, technology and financial problems are among the main causes of the problems identified by the study. 
Ethiopian Cargo and Logistics Service has received the Export and Import Cargo Transportation Award at a customer's symposium organized by Guangzhou by Yuin International Airport in China. According to a statement Ethiopian Airlines issued recently, top 10 international cargo carriers, domestic cargo carriers and cargo agents took part in the symposium. Africa's largest Cargo operator Ethiopian Airlines Group has the major share of 13% of the total international cargo transportation at Bayoun International Airport. Ethiopian Cargo and Logistics launched in January 2018 direct freighter service from regional airport in Bahada to Laig, further facilitating fresh delivery of agriculture producers like flour and vegetables. The number of Chinese tourists who visited Tunisia in 2017 has increased significantly by 400 percent. Thousands of visitors arrived on indirect flights and via cruise ships. This positive tendency increases Chinese tourists to the North African destination. Jerusalem Bazaar has more from CGTN. Tunisia is a favorite destination for Chinese tourists every year. Thousands seize the opportunity of the spring holidays to visit the country. I came to Tunisia to discover its culture and history. I'm interested in museums, art, and the ancient archaeological site. Many history lovers are fascinated by the Carthaginian general Hannibal Barca, known as one of the greatest military leaders in history. When I was young, I learned at high school about the great general Hannibal. I am in Tunisia to walk in his footsteps. The civilization is over 2,500 years old. I recommend this destination in North Africa to all of my Chinese friends. Tunisians are also well known for handicrafts. Many tourists from China like to take souvenirs back home with them. Chinese travelers come to experience local life in a different culture. They love Tunisian handicrafts working with tourists from China. It's always a pleasure. Sometimes the language barrier complicates communication between the visitors and their Tunisian hosts. Hundreds of professional guides are available to accompany Chinese tourists. During their visits, some guides learned Mandarin through formal classes, while others picked up the language from the tourists. Many clients just speak their native language. They don't speak English. We have adapted as professionals. Now communicating with our Chinese friends is easy. I learned the language during my tours. Tourism brings Tunisians and Chinese people together. We are a group of friends. I speak Italian where there is speak other languages. We always travel together. This is not our first visit and it will not be the last trip to this beautiful country. Chinese retired travel in some groups. Some speak the language of the Mediterranean countries. They have been to North Africa several times and continue to travel to the region. Person of the African Union Commission, Musa Faki Mohammed, says or seeks to cooperate with China in several areas, including peace and security, infrastructure and health care. The chairperson was on a visit to China on Thursday. Kafleo Sababa has more from CGTN. This is the current African Union Commission chairman's visit to China since assuming office. He and Wang Yi coach had a seven China-African Union strategic dialogue in Beijing on Thursday. They exchanged views on five major cooperation areas, such as capacity building, infrastructure, peace and security, public health, tourism, and aviation. Wang Yi said China fully supported Africa's drive for sustainable development and is keen to make the most of the coming forum of China-Africa cooperation. In September, we are going to host FOCAC Summit in Beijing. We have extended the invitations of African countries. China will work with the African Union Commission and all the African members of FOCAC act under the principles of extensive consultation, joint contribution and share the benefit to make the FOCAC Summit a historic gathering for China-Africa solidarity and cooperation. We have, received an we have received an invitation to participate in the FOCAC Summit in Beijing. We will also be involved in the preparations of convening a successful summit 
We thank the Chinese for supporting the African Union setting up office in China given the importance of our bilateral ties. We will work together in establishing an official African Union office in Beijing. Foreign Minister of China and AUC chairperson agreed to push forward integration of 10 major cooperation plans and the AU 2063 agenda. Both sides agreed to intensify coordination in international and regional affairs and to promote development of China, Africa, and other developing countries. Well, that's the end of the news. Many thanks for watching and have a good time.